Hey everybody, Jeff with SparkFun Electronics. Today we're going to go back into the robotics tutorials that we started on the last one. We got through the H-Bridge driver and transistor the last time, so this time what we're going to do is actually hook that up to a motor. This is a really simple robot. It's, uh, it's just a piece of masonite, one of our ball casters, a couple of wheels, a couple of motors. The idea is that uh, if you've got a basic, let's say, an inventor's kit lying around or just an Arduino, um, we want to show you guys how to get things working with the minimum stuff that you had to buy. We're using that H-Bridge driver on the 4475-4410 chip. So let's take a look at the 754410 pinout to get some idea of the functionality and why we're doing what we're doing. If I'm only going to use one motor to start with, and it's nice to just get a handle on how we run this with one motor, I have two pins here that take my motor, and this is all really well documented. Uh, if you need a closer view, a little more resolution on this, well documented on the tutorial that we've included on the page. But my motor's going to hook to one Y and 2Y right here. These are pins 3 and 6 on the chip. Then I have to enable this chip and I do that by sending pin 1 high which means I pull it to 5 volts. I then have central ground pins on 4 and 5 and I have motor logic pins on 2 and 7 and motor voltage on 8. In this particular case I'm going to send the full voltage from my battery or my USB right here to my motor. And this is the motor we're switching. How I hold pins 2 and pin 7 determine which way the motor spins or whether it stops. And for that, what we can do is reference the table. And this is right off the ITP tutorial. I just copied it onto the board. If I enable the high pin, my number 1 pin high, and my 1A pin here, is low and my 2A pin here is high, my motor turns right. If I switch these states and 1A is high and 2A is low, the motor turns the opposite way. Any other option on this table, if this is high and the pins are both low, it stops. If this is high and the pins are both high, it stops. And if this is low, it doesn't matter what happens, everything shuts off. And it's the same for the opposite side on the truth table. So this side of the chip will run another motor with exactly the same truth table except here is going to be 3 and 4 instead of 1 and 2. The first thing I'm going to do is look at my notch on my chip, make sure it's up. We talked before about enabling the motors and you can see that I've got a motor jumped and a nice orange motor for hot because I'm going to send 5 volts here. I'm going to enable pins 1 and 2. I'm going to jump this over to the 5 volt supply on the chip and then I'm going to jump it from there down to the 3 and 4 enable on the other side of the motor. You can see that both of my motors are hooked to my motor pins. This is the 1 and 2 pin right here. This is the 3 and 4, and one motor goes to this side, and the other motor goes to this side. Now, as a precaution, what I've done is tied all my ground leads together, and you can see that with the green wires. There are four contiguous ground leads in the center of the chip. I've tied them all together with short jumper leads to make things a little more uh, visually easy to understand. Let's start plugging some wires in. I'm going to take my ground lead, and I'm going to pull a ground from the Arduino GND. And I'm going to go right out to that contiguous ground lead. Because all those pins are tied together, it doesn't matter which one of those four pin rows I plug in on. Next, I'm going to send my voltage supply to the motor. I'm going to tie into VIN on the Arduino. I've got the, the, the ITP tutorial pulled up, so I'm going to consult just to make sure. This is my supply voltage. I was right on the first guess. I don't remember every pin out on every chip, but I'm getting better as I get older. So the next thing I'm going to do is start looking at my motor logic. And I've got pins 8 and 9 in my Arduino sketch enabled uh, so that this blue and white motor, the motor as I face this way on my right, should turn right when I enable those pins. So I'm going to take blue to pin 8 from pin 6, and I'm going to take pin 9 to pin 2, and let's pull some power off my laptop and see how well I did. So I haven't put 5 volts to the chip, so I need to give the chip voltage or else it's not going to run. So I'm going to pull 5 volts right there and plug it into my 5V on the chip, and lo and behold, there goes my motor. 
So the next thing we're going to do is wire the second side of the robot and see how we get both these motors running in one direction. Again, we're going to go back to this. Make sure that we're enabled on the other side of the chip. And I pre-wired that earlier, so it shouldn't be a problem. In my sketch, the same way that I wrote pins 8 and 9 high and low, I also wrote pin 10 high and pin 11 low. So if I pull the same kind of arrangement over here, I should get the same behavior on the opposite side of the chip. Plug it in. But one of the things is, is that my motor, my wheels are spinning in different directions. So all I'm going to do is switch my logic pins. Now they're both spinning in the same direction. Observe the awesome power of Kluge Bob. So we talked earlier about the enable pins on these, and what I've done is I've tied all the enable pins to 5 volts, the chip voltage, which ties them high, which means everything will operate. That's cool. Well, the next thing I can do is pulse these pins. So if I take 5 volts and leave my 5 volts hooked up, but take my enable pins and put them on a pulse width pin, I can get variable speed depending on some input, and I'm going to use an analog input to get a variable speed using pulse width modulation. Let's take a look at how I do that. So I've got 5 volts tied to the enable pins right here on the chip. What I'm going to do is actually pull this enable wire right here, leaving 5 volts as my chip voltage. I'm just going to move it over a row or two. And I've got a pulse width coming out of uh, pin 3, or pin 6, I believe. Now I'm using a simple analog read, and what I'm going to start with is this potentiometer, so I can vary the speed depending on how I turn the potentiometer. So I'm going to plug my potentiometer into these three open pins. Then I'm going to take the standard hot, ground, and signal lines, and I'll provide 5 volts to one side, which means I can pull right off that 5 volt pin that's supplying chip voltage. I can go ground to ground. And does it matter if my ground is on the board or on the chip? It doesn't. So I'm going to pull the ground over here just because it's a little less crowded and uh, makes it easier to plug stuff in. My signal wire, I'm going to take this nice yellow wire, plug it in right here, plug it into pin A0. Now, what I've done in my Arduino sketch is written a sketch that says, take that analog voltage, scale it to pulse width modulation, and write it to the wheels. Let's see how that works. So I plug that in, and then as I go over here, you can watch as I turn the dial, it gets slower, or it speeds up as I turn the dial because I'm getting a, a larger pulse width out of the, the larger voltage coming out of the analog read. So if we want to start looking at how to get more autonomous behavior out of these robots and how to integrate sensors, I'm actually going to take a little more um, kind of difficult sensor to work with and work with that. And I took a simple light sensor right here, and I got a 10K resistor. Let's do a quick review of voltage dividers. If I take two resistors of equal value, and this is my first resistor, and I come over and I got another one over here. I'm going to call this one 10K. I'm going to call this one 10K. If I put 5 volts here, and I put ground over here, if I read right here, I have half the total resistance of the circuit, which means I'm going to get half the voltage, meaning 2.5 volts here. And this is how voltage dividers work. And when we work with these potentiometers, they're basically two stacked variable resistors where this resistance either increases while this one decreases, or this resistance increases while this one decreases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a voltage divider with this light dependent resistor and this solid value 10K resistor, and I'm just going to wire them together the same way I did before, where instead of having two 10K resistors in a row, I'm going to have my light dependent resistor, and then my 10K resistor, and they're going to share a common pin in the middle, and that's where I'm going to pull my analog voltage read. If I pull over KlugeBot and take a look, what I've got here is it's already wired from the potentiometer for exactly what I need. I take the two legs of my light dependent resistor, I'm going to plug them in between 
the 5 volt supply and the center read, which is on pin A0, analog 0 in Arduino. If you look at the analog read serial sketch in the basics folder in Arduino, it gives all the functionality of this, and you can kind of work with this on your own if you're not familiar with it. The next thing I'm going to do is take my 10K resistor and plug that between the center pin and ground so that both resistors share a common pin, and that's where I'm reading the voltage. So let's plug this in. If I put my finger over there, you can watch my wheels slow down. And if I take something solid, like the card in this bag of resistors, and put it over there, you can really watch it slow down, because it really blocks the light. So that's the first and most simple example of getting a sensor to give feedback for a robot. And uh, if you have a oscilloscope in your classroom, you can take that oscilloscope and look at the variable output from the resistor to the pulse width pins. There's a bunch of fun stuff you can do with this. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on this series of basic tutorials on robotics. Thank <laughs> you.